Welcome back to Gaming with Bigby. I am Bigby, and welcome back to World of Warships Wednesdays. And we're going to do a little bit something different this Wednesday. We're going to talk about, uh, do a sort of a little mini review here of uh, one of the ships, the Tier 3 Kohlberg. Um, as you can see by the video, the uh, Halloween event in World of Warships is still going on, and this is also about the same time that they've released the, uh, the German line of cruisers, which if we go up here to the tech tree... You will see we start out with the Tier 1 Hermelin, which is uh, just a little cruiser. Interestingly enough, if you look uh, at the tech tree, you'll note that the Hermelin was actually, uh, year of design was 1939. Um, and as such, it's actually a, a little bit of a later design uh, than some of the other Tier 1s. Uh, and it's, it's actually quite a, quite a good little gunboat. It's pretty good for a tier one, but we're not here to talk about that today. Uh, that leads on to the Dresden, and then that goes up to the Kohlberg, which is the one that we're at, uh, one that we're talking about today. Now, tier three is an interesting tier. It's when uh, the ships really start to get interesting. Um, your tier ones, your tier twos, they're they're okay. They're not usually very much to write home about. The Dresden's not really all that impressive. Um, but uh, if you look at, say, for example, the American line, Tier 3 is where you get the St. Louis, which everybody knows about the St. Louis. It is definitely the, uh, the big boy on the block. Um, Japan's got the Tenryu, which is okay. Uh, if we take a look at it here, it's got 140mm uh, guns. Uh, it's got, let's see, how many of them does it have? Uh, just four of them, so it's all right, but it's got fairly good. It's, it's torpedoes have a uh, seven kilometer range, 57 knot speed, so not bad. It's it's definitely uh, in the Japanese mold, but uh, it's no St. Louis. Uh, it just, just the St. Louis is all about the guns. Well, Germans love their guns as well, and the Kohlberg is in many ways and in many respects Germany's answer to the St. Louis. Um, it's a contemporary vessel uh, to the St. Louis, uh, roughly around the same time, uh, and it, it definitely has that St. Louisy sort of feel when you look at the guns. Uh, even if you notice, it only has one choice for guns, and that is the surprisingly low caliber 105 millimeter L45 MPL CO6. Um, but uh, you look at the rate of fire, it's 16.7 rounds per minute, 180 degree turn time is 14.4 seconds, so it has an excellent turn time on the guns. Um, damage is, well, it's only 105 millimeters. It's, it's literally thrill, three millimeters larger diameter gun than American destroyers at this level. <laughs> so you're not talking about a tremendous amount of firepower here, but it's got a lot of them. As a matter of fact, it has 12 of them. We have two mounted in these turrets up front. And we have one here mounted in the uh, the side sponson here. And another one in a turret on the side. Another turret there. Another one mounted in the side sponson in the back. And then two more in the back. Um, So all in all, uh, you know, a good good amount of guns. You get uh, 12 guns, and you can actually, due to the arrangement of how that they're placed on the ship, um, depending on the angle that you're firing at, sometimes you can get this gun, this gun, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then this one will swing around, and you can get that one in play. So you can actually get seven shots, um, seven guns into play, depending on the angle that you're at. But most of the time, you're going to have about five or six of them in play at any given time. So, not as many as the St. Louis's t uh, 10 guns at once type setup, but you've got a little bit more angle on the guns than the St. Louis, which most of the guns are mounted in the side sponsons. So, your rate of fire, your arc of fire is much, much more limited with the St. Louis for each of the guns. And as such, unless you are at exactly 90 degree angle, you're not going to get all 10 guns on target. Whereas with this one, you've got a little bit more flexibility of the angles you can be at because of the fact that so many more of the guns are turreted. And as such, they have a much wider, broader arc of motion. You can see, like, just these two side guns right here. Look 
how far this one right here is pointed backwards and this other one is pointed forwards. Well, this one can point back as much as that one can and that one can point as forward as that one can. So very, very wide, wide firing arc. Um, and the guns are fast, much faster than the St. Louis is noticeably so. Um, I've played a few games in this and then I switched over to play the St. Louis and I can tell you that the, uh, I, I, there was like a few times in the St. Louis I'm going, okay, fire, fire, fire. And they weren't ready yet. The guns were not ready. Um, because they are, you know, they're a larger caliber, but they are much slower firing than the ones on the Kohlberg. So, all in all, that's uh, certainly, you know, a very useful thing. Um, but, again, the, the guns are very, very low caliber. Uh, you've got two hulls to choose from. Your A, which is uh, 1,700 hit points. Uh, same, amount of, same amount of armor, same amount of turrets as the, the, uh, the Kohlberg B hull, which has got more hit points. Um... And it's a little bit more survivable and uh, maneuverable than the A. And really, that is that is the key to the difference between um, the Kohlberg and the St. Louis. The St. Louis has all the guns. It's got 10 guns, bigger caliber, slower firing, but comparable. Actually, I think a little bit more range on them than the, uh, than the Kohlberg does. Um, a little bit less accurate, but bigger guns more of them but the st louis is a pig <laughs> it is big slow and cumbersome um it really is almost like a miniature battleship the kohlberg is much more of a cruiser it's much narrower in profile as you can see here um it's long it's narrow it's quick uh, if we look at the speed here, 27.6 knots. Now, if you look at the St. Louis's maximum speed, 22.4 knots. So the Kohlberg, uh, you don't even have to be going full. You, it, it, I think it's about one half to three quarters speed is about the same speed as St. Louis's top speed. This ship is maneuverable. It's got a quick rudder shift time. Well. You'll see in the in the in the replays that we're gonna have uh, that I'm gonna have for you uh, this is me driving my Kohlberg, or excuse me, sailing my Kohlberg. I, I'm able to really show off in these replays the uh, the maneuverability of the of the Kohlberg and the agility of the Kohlberg, and how well it does against uh, other targets with that fast, rapid firing, constant, constant, keep it up, keep it up, ripple fire that you can keep going with this thing for very little effort. But before we get into the replays, let's talk a little bit about the history of the actual Kohlberg and how she differs from the one that we see in World of Warships. SMS Kohlberg was a light cruiser of the German Kaiserliche Marine, Imperial Navy, during the First World War, the lead ship of her class. She had three sister ships, SMS Mainz, Köln, and Augsburg. She was built by the Schenkau Werk. Her hull was laid down in early 1908 and she was launched later that year in November. She was commissioned into the High Seas Fleet in June 1910, and she was armed with a main battery of 12 10.5cm SKL-45 guns, and had a top speed of 25.5 knots. Kohlberg saw action in several engagements with the British during the war, including the raid on Scarborough, Har Hartlepool, and Whitby in December 1914, and the Battle of Dogger Bank the following month. She also saw action against the Russians on two occasions, during the Battle of the Gulf of Riga in August 1915 and Operation Albion in November 1917. After the end of the war, she was ceded to France as a war prize and renamed Colmar. She served only briefly in the French Navy, including a deployment to Asia in 1924. She was stricken in 1927 and broken up two years later. Kohlberg was ordered under the contract name Ersatz Grief and was laid down in early 1908 at the Werk shipyard in Danzig. She was launched on 14th of November 1908, after which fitting out work commenced. She was commissioned into the High Seas Fleet on the 21st of June 1910. The ship was 130.5 meters long overall and had a beam of 14 meters and a draft of 5.58 uh, meters forward. She displaced 4,915 tons at full combat load. Her propulsion system consisted of two sets of Melms and Feniger steam turbines driving four 2.25 meter propellers. They were designed to give 19,000 metric horsepower. These were powered by 15 coal-fired marine water tube boilers. They gave the ship a top speed of 25.5 knots rated. 
Kohlberg carried 970 tons of coal that gave her a range of approximately 3,250 nautical miles at 14 knots. Kohlberg had a crew of 18 officers and 349 enlisted men. The ship was armed with 12 10.5 centimeter SKL-45 guns in single pedestal mounts. Two were placed side by side forward on the forecastle, eight were lo located amidships, four on either side, and two were side by side aft. These were replaced in 1916 to 1917 with six 15 centimeter SKL-45 guns. She also carried four 5.2 centimeter SKL-55 anti-aircraft guns although these were replaced with a pair of two 8.8 centimeter SKL-45 anti-aircraft guns in 1918. She was also equipped with a pair of 45 centimeter torpedo tubes submerged in the hull. Two deck-mounted 50 centimeter torpedo tube launchers were added in 1918. She could also carry 100 mines. The conning tower had 100 millimeters uh, thick sides, and the deck was covered with up to 40 millimeters thick armor plate. So, without further ado, Let's get to the replays. And here we are in the islands map on a very tier 3 game. And as the uh, audio, for some strange reason, blasts us in the ears with what sounds like electric guitars, we begin our game. And I'm situated pretty much dead center of the map here on our side. Uh, almost directly across from the B capture point. And I'm going to head up in this direction, uh, along with several of the other cruisers that are with me. And it's interesting that we were talking about the armament on the uh, on the Kohlberg. In the game, it only has the 105mm uh, guns, but in reality, uh, she was upgraded later with 150mm or 15cm guns. Um, I do find it a little bit disconcerting that these are not included in the game because even though the Kohlberg has two hulls, the second hull does not enable the ability to get a higher caliber gun on this boat, and I really honestly do feel that's an oversight um, from Wargaming. They, I think they really do need to include the 150mm uh, the gun on this. Uh, the St. Louis that you see in front of me here has 155mm guns, at the same tier, tier 3, and it has 20 of them total. The Goldberg only has 12 guns total, and they're at a much lower caliber. So, despite the higher speed and higher maneuverability, it is much less armored and has significantly less damage output. And, as I round the corner and I decide to pull up sort of, uh, and kind of sail with this St. Louis, you'll see me put these 105mm guns to work. And there's another Kohlberg there, deciding he's just going to dive in there. And we're going to put some of our first shots out at a Dresden back there. That's a Tier 2 ship. That's the one that leads directly up to the, Kohl, uh, the, uh, the Kohlberg. And we're going to take some pot shots at this. What is this? This is a, uh, a destroyer over here. It's popping in and out of his smoke screen. Oh, we get one hit out of all that. And, oh, the St. Louis decides to kind of cut in front of me there. I did break as quickly as I could, but still bumped him a little bit. No, no serious damage, thankfully. All right, so we're going to kind of continue on along this line. The torpedoes that are over there aren't at, of any uh, danger to us. Although I do keep checking behind, just to be sure. I can see that South Carolina... And I'm thinking about going up and uh, shooting at him, but then I see this... We've got this destroyer that pops out of the smoke screen over there and is engaging uh, the friendly destroyer. So I decide to go ahead and pitch in and help. I switch over to HE. You can see I get a hit on him. Take out his engine. Start lighting him up. But you'll notice, even though I'm getting critical hits and I'm doing damage, the volume of damage that I'm doing is very, very low. That big hit was not from me. That was from a torpedo from the friendly uh, destroyer. So you'll notice I am not doing a tremendous amount of damage to this ship. As a matter of fact, I don't even get the kill on him, despite loading him up with dozens upon dozens of shells. I, the, the low 105mm caliber just does not have what it takes 
it's thankful that you have you can uh, that they fire so quickly that you can just keep loading the shells but as you see I'll come around here and there's a there's a Dresden again back there I think that's the same one I shot at earlier um, he never does come around that end of the island he ends up turning around and coming back you'll see him here we go I'm gonna take some shots at this uh, destroyer unfortunately I had loaded AP in anticipation of shooting at the Dresden but then he never popped out, and I was stuck with the uh, the wrong kind of ammo, t ammo type. But you'll see I'm doing about the same amount of damage with the AP that I was doing with HE. The only difference is I'm not doing module damage, as it were. I'm not taking out his engine. I'm not knocking out his... Uh... Oh, yeah, and he thought he was going to get me with those torpedoes. But, hey, the maneuverability of this ship does keep you in play. Now, I'm still firing AP, and here comes that Dresden. Now, me and this Dresden are about to engage in... A rather nasty close quarters dogfight. And you're gonna see that despite this ship being a tier higher than the Dresden and fully upgraded at the time of this battle, I just barely come off the better in this battle. You see, I'm landing some shots. Now I am not taking, admittedly, not taking full advantage of the, of the Kohlberg's guns. I'm pointing, I'm sailing away from him, so I'm only able to shoot three guns at a time at him. Um, I have to keep looking around because I know I'm steering into where some islands are, and I do not want to run aground. And he's giving me the broadside, giving me something to shoot at, thankfully. I'll try to get some citadels, but I don't know if I get any on him. I see this Chester just sort of sitting there, so I decide, well, all right, I'm going to hook around behind him and let him take some of the heat off of me. Because as you can see, my health is just melting away under the withering barrage from this Dresden. But now I'm able to really bring the guns to bear because I'm able to bring it around sideways. We're just going to start unloading on this thing. But even now, I mean, you can see how many shots I'm having to fire at him in order to whittle him down. And this is taking way too long. Look at how little health I have left. And yes, I do get the kill. That was ridiculous. That is a tier two ship. I should not have had that much difficulty taking him out in a fully upgraded tier three. The 105 millimeter guns on this ship are not enough. Um, Wargaming, if there's anybody out there listening, you give us a second upgraded hull, you need to give us access to the 150 millimeter guns. Um, with 150 millimeter guns, with 12 of those, the Kohlberg becomes a force to be reckoned with. With the 105 millimeter guns, it's an annoyance to be reckoned with. This game pretty much tails out. I really don't have any more, uh, not much else happens. Don't really shoot in anything else. I go around, I recapture the, uh, the sights. Uh, I eventually succumb to a fluke torpedo hit, and our team does win. So there's not much more else to say about this particular game. And here we are on another very tier 3 game on the big race map. And, and fair seas. as my teammates wish us all good luck, I'm starting on the on the northern end of the uh, of the uh, starting grid here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and after I look around a little bit, I'm going to get myself up to speed and I'm going to go ahead and follow this St. Louis up Thank here. You. And we're going to head uh, right up to right up to due north uh, right along the uh, the ten line nine and ten lines here and see what we can see and uh, continuing my while we sail up here uh, continuing my thoughts from earlier um, in addition to the uh, 150 millimeter guns uh, from the later version of the Goldberg not being available, neither the early version nor the late version anti-aircraft guns are available on this ship. Uh, as of this recording, the Goldberg has no anti-aircraft to speak of, which is a bit odd. Even at Tier 3, um, the other Tier 3 ships do actually have at least a small amount of anti-aircraft. It's largely ineffective, but it is at least there. The Kohlberg has none whatsoever, so again, I can only assume this is an oversight by Wargaming. 
uh, and that these are basically early beta versions, as it were, of the uh, German ships. And as they get played, they'll be getting reviewed and, uh, and altered. And we can see there's another Goldberg down there. We're going to go ahead and hurl some HE down at him. And then he's going to get out of our targeting range. And uh, we're going to switch to AP. Yes, thank you. Thankfully, the uh, audio spam doesn't appear to be too much of a problem on the North American server like I have heard it is on the EU servers. Uh, I understand that it can get quite bad there. And we have our uh, destroyer here setting a smokescreen for us. Thank you very much. That actually, I think, is going to prevent us from coming under fire from the South Carolinas that are over there. At least until we start using our guns and we start firing back at this, firing at this Goldberg here. Now you'll see I get a lot of hits on this particular ship. Now here I'm just using straight up uh, mass fire, trying to get single large hits in, because I pretty much have his range. And he's shooting back at us. You can see the maneuverability of the Kohlberg here. Uh, he, he's dodging a lot of fire. Look at the amount of fire he's under. He's under fire from another Kohlberg and two St. Louis's and a destroyer. And he is dodging quite a bit of it. Now, obviously, he's taking an absolute punishment while he's there. But look how much fire he's dodging. I mean, he is just... He is juking and jagging all over the place. But he does eventually succumb to the uh, barrage... The absolute withering barrage of fire. And uh, I don't know who got the kill. One of the... Uh, I believe that was one of the... Uh, one of the St. Louis's got it. And then we start firing at this South Carolina who interestingly enough has got the uh, has got the uh, the special event skin loaded there and we'll see how well it ha it does for him and both of the South Carolinas decide they're gonna shoot at me instead of the St. Louis's for some unknown reason uh, I believe I'm slightly closer than the others so possibly more in their range oh and he sets me on fire but I get that put out real quick and you can see uh, the the Kohlberg is not tremendously well armored, so I am taking quite a bit of damage from the uh, South Carolinas. Thankfully, they don't get too many more hits on me. You see that one just uh, tagged me. He got about 800 points off of me, but only one of the shells hit me, so it did all right. But look at the amount of fire that I'm putting into this South Carolina. Just barrage after barrage after barrage, and I'm not actually. Again, I, I'm not hitting it as much as I could because I'm checking on that other one. I am, rather than focusing down and just staying in zoomed in mode and just blazing away with the guns, I am actually looking around and trying to be careful and, you know, paying attention to my surroundings and where those shells are coming in because I don't want to just sit there and get blown away while I'm not paying attention or run into another ship or run into an island. But my shots are still effective. That shot goes out and... It does just enough damage to take off the last of his health points. Now, do not consider that any kind of a defense of the Kohlberg's damage output, because that South Carolina was, just like the previous Kohlberg, under fire from three separate cruisers. Two of them were St. Louis's. So, while I was putting... I basically just stole that kill. <laughs> there was a few of the points left and my shells landed a split second before the St. Louis's shells did and I managed to finish him off because I did an alpha strike shot instead of a, a ripple fire shot. But, you know, if I had ripple fired that, the St. Louis would have got the kill, not me. So, you know, there's... Again, the, the while I can do damage with these guns, it takes so long to do any significant amount of damage and... I don't, you know, I don't have a secondary gun upgrade, there's no AA on this thing, uh, and the original version in the later hull had torpedo tubes. There's no torpedoes available on the, the Kohlberg at all. That's not to say it's a bad ship. It is an excellent ship. It's actually a very, for a tier 3 ship, it's actually very good. It is maneuverable, it is fast. It has very fast firing, fast moving, you know, fast turning guns. 
uh, it has an excellent, you can see, look, look at this, it's just, boom, I am putting the next shots out before the first shots have even landed. The, the ripple fire on this thing is amazing, but look at how much you have to stay in zoomed in view for it to be effective. You basically have to not pay attention to what's going on around you, and that can get you into problems, especially in a cruiser, and in a fast cruiser like this one, um, that's going to cause you trouble. And we got a Wix coming up here, so I decided to take some shots at him, because he is the more immediate threat, both to me and to the, uh, the friendly cruiser. Or the friendly battleship, excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and take some shots at him, and I don't think I get too many hits. But we get a little damage in. And, but you can see I'm not doing a tremendous amount of damage, even with HE shells. And getting quite a few, landing quite a few hits on them. I'm just... Those 105 millimeters, they just don't have what it takes. Oh, that one completely missed. And the uh, the battleship takes him out. And that's the end of the battle down at that end of the map for me. So we're going to go ahead and head down here uh, towards this enemy St. Louis and that is capping the base. We're going to see if we can maybe do something about uh, who's got the capture points there. Oh, and look, there's a destroyer. It's well, he's closer, so we'll shoot at him. And we'll dodge this island. There's that quick rudder shift time. Hey, and look at that. Oh, we took some capture points off. Fantastic. Alright, uh, take another pot shot at that, uh, that destroyer there. And we're going to just move around this island. Interestingly, this uh, this ship, uh, uh, of of its uh, its uh, four sister ships, um, this was only two of them that survived World War One. Um, interestingly enough, it ended up being uh, via the Treaty of Versailles, and it ended up being uh, given to France as a war prize, and actually served for ten years in the French Navy uh, before eventually being scrapped. Uh, its sister ship, the Altberg, uh was uh, given to Japan, and whereupon it was immediately scrapped, unfortunately, for that ship. And we're getting some shots out on this St. Louis. And he's returning fire. See, now look how much more damage he's doing to me than I'm doing to him. And I'm using AP shells. I mean, I'm definitely doing some damage, but not a whole lot. And... Look at this, 10 hits, 11 hits, 12, 13. If I was in a St. Louis, he'd already be dead. Look at this, look at my health just melting away. Uh, I do eventually manage to get him, but I get incapacitated from this uh, shot from this... Destroyer. Unfortunately, on my screen here, I can't see it. But uh, so now I've got no repair, and I got no engine, and I'm just assuming I'm dead. But thankfully, this guy's a terrible shot with his torpedoes, and completely missed me. So I'm just gonna keep on putting the guns to work, doing whatever I can. I'm still got other ships taking pot shots at me. I cannot believe I'm not dead yet some other badly fired torpedoes that totally miss me and everything else as I slowly drift along with the wa waves here take some shots at this other St. Louis and come on repair come on let's get some more fire out I mean I am so nearly dead I cannot believe I've not died yet and the destroyer's coming around it's an umikaze. That's what it is. Oh, and I'm getting some more shots. I'm getting hit by that St. Louis again. How it is he's not killed me yet, I do not know, but my repair is about to come off cooldown. And I'm sitting there watching it, sitting there watching it. Go, 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 go. And, uh-oh, here comes the St. Louis. 
And is he, is he charging me down? Well, I'm gonna just kill him. <laughs> well, there's kill number three for me. Uh, wow, incredible luck there. I, I, that was with HE shells, too. So I must have uh, hit something. <laughs> it wasn't a Citadel hit, but boy, I got him at just the right time, and it was enough to kill him, so I'll take it. So I am on 837 health. I have the barest fingernail of health left on my ship. And I am cruising away, but I know that that destroyer is back there behind that island. And I know he's damaged. And I make a mistake. I decide to go back after him. Dumb. When you're this damaged, unless you're the last ship and you have no choice, you never go back into battle. This was foolish of me. I should never have done this. I should have sailed straight away from him and let the other guys deal with him. But darn it, I wanted that fourth kill. And there he is. But he's got the shots out before I do. He hits me. He sets me on fire. I've got 15 seconds before my repair is available. And it's not enough. And that's the end of me. Dumb. What a dumb way to go. And I did get a couple more hits on that uh, destroyer, but it wasn't enough to kill him, and he gets away. And you can see there, I knew I should have moved, i.e. I knew I should have run away, and I didn't realize I had my caps lock on. Whoops, caps lock. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Don't mean to shout in the chat. So, as we watch my stupidity sink beneath the waves, <laughs> we'll... Uh, Let's flip over to my teammates here that are wisely attempting to cap the base. That destroyer is the last one left on his team. He knows he's got to do something because they will. there is plenty of time in this game for them to cap that base. They can absolutely get it. The policeman here is not pleased at all with the fact that that destroyer is not coming out though and he'll let us know in the chat. Watch him cruise along here. You know he's out there. Let's see if we can bait him in. Come on, the policeman. You can do it. Bait him in. And we're waiting. See, there he is. Calls him a coward right in the chat. <laughs> I could have said something worse, I suppose. Oh, and he takes the bait. Shoots right at him. That was a mistake. And I'm pointing, I'm pointing out the obvious. There he is. And... Boom. That's it. Game over. And there you have it. The Kohlberg. Germany's answer to the St. Louis? Maybe. It's definitely got the guns, but not quite the punch. And it's got a little bit more speed and better maneuverability. Is it a good overall ship? Absolutely. It's, uh, you will enjoy, if you enjoy playing the St. Louis, you will absolutely love playing the Kohlberg. Is it like the St. Louis, a ship that you're going to want to keep in your stable uh, down the road for going back and playing later if you want to maybe restrict the number of slots that you have? Well, maybe. That's up to you. Uh, that's a decision that you're going to have to make. It all depends on your personal taste. But with that said, I think we're going to call this a review. And I want to thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode.